Okay, so in this quick video, I'm going to cover the roles tab of the Dream Factory Admin Console. So what are roles? Roles are the mechanism by which you control access to all of the services, i.e. APIs, that you set up inside of Dream Factory. So each end user that logs into whatever applications that you're building is tied to a specific role for that particular application. So that role then controls what that user can and cannot do inside of that particular application. So applications can have more than one role and likewise users can have more than one role depending on the context of the particular application or applications that they need to log into. So setting up roles is very easy. You go into the roles tab and you'll see a list of different roles here and you can click to create a new role. And when you define a role, I will show an example. So here is a role for the iOS address book that I imported in one of the earlier tutorials. It's easy to do that. The application itself gets imported in a schema, uh, a data model for the app gets imported as well. And then what you can do is define a particular role which will control access to the underlying table for the iOS address book application. So we give our role a name and a description and make it active and then we can save it. And then what we do is we go and we define the particular access rules. This is role-based access control. So this particular simple address book application that we're showing here uh, has four different tables. So in order for users to actually use that application, we have to open up access control. We have to say, okay, these users can access this particular DB API, which again, we set up in services. And that particular table has various entities, a contact, a contact group, a contact group relationship, and contact info. And in order for that application to work, we need to give control to use users to actually access the underlying data. And that's what we've done here. So for the four tables, we say, okay, we're gonna select these table tables, and then we give uh, the various HTTP permissions. So you can make tables read-only, you can make them updatable only, you can do any combination and turn the verbs on or off at your discretion. The other concept is APIs and scripts. So direct access to the table via the API, you simply check the API checkbox. You can also check or uncheck scripts. So scripts run on API endpoints. So you might have use cases where you don't want to allow direct API access to a particular table, but you do want to enable that particular role to access a script, let's say that's running on that particular table without direct API control to the records themselves. So that's what the uh, API and script uh, toggles do there. So here we've opened up access to these four tables. You'll notice in this list box, every service that you set up will show up here. So these can be file systems, SQL databases, NoSQL databases, remote web services, your own custom APIs that you build in Dream Factory. everything will show up here. By default, nothing is exposed. You have to explicitly expose uh, access to each and every role. Otherwise, the API will not return data. It, that's how you secure it. So that's table level access control. There's also record level access control. So in a particular table, I can say, for example, in this contact object, we have, let's say, an owner ID field. And we want to establish that only users logged in can create, read, update, and delete their own records. So we would create a condition here that owner ID must equal uh, the user ID. That's the, the uh, definition or the identity, rather, of the person who's logged in. You can add as many of these as you want, and you can do intersections or unions on the conditional logic. So that is a way to expose record level access control on a particular set of records in a particular table. So that's very powerful from a permissions perspective. The last thing I'll cover quickly is, in addition to users having lookup keys, roles have lookup keys. Uh, lookup keys, very simply, are authentication mechanisms. So if you have a particular, say, field in an external database that uh, you know, defines what a particular role can and cannot access at the table level, you could put in the access key for that external database, that particular service. And then when the user authenticates through Dream Factory and accesses that remote database that's running somewhere, say behind your firewall, Dream Factory will inherit those access key permissions. So that's basically how that works. So this is a quick overview of roles. Uh, I highly recommend checking out our user documentation uh, for developers, wiki.dreamfactory.com slash dreamfactory, and you can have a look there. There are a bunch of tutorials, so th these cover the actual mechanics of setting up roles for 
uh, particular services, whether that's SQL tables, NoSQL collections, different document systems, push notifications, etc. These provide some simple directions on how to get that up and running. So hopefully this is helpful and we cover a bunch of other areas, actually each of these tabs in the other tutorials on YouTube, so please take a look at those as well. Thanks.